Welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider of the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Brightwood alongside Kevin Robinson and Coach went down to the War Eagle invite down at Auburn. Uh, it was an individually scored event, so there were no team scores. Tell us about kind of how that went for you guys. I'm going to highlight a couple of your female athletes in a moment, but uh, when you do these individual things, that gives you a chance to really, I guess, pick and choose who maybe needs that work and, and who you need to showcase. Yeah, the, the Auburn trip for us was, uh, was kind of the highlight of the the spring schedule, uh, excluding our championships and postseason. So we get down there on Thursday, and Thursday's absolutely beautiful. And uh, then it starts raining about <laughs> 6 a.m. on Friday morning. And uh, we're supposed to have a full day of competition on Friday. We ended up getting through the men's hammer through a torrential downpour, and they canceled the rest of the meet for Friday. So, in fact, we did two full days of meet events on Saturday alone. Uh, so. Didn't work out the way we had anticipated, but uh, you know the kids bounced back. Um, did a pretty good job. We had a handful of uh, very good individual performances, and um, you know it's unfortunate that Friday didn't happen the way it was supposed to. But that's outdoor track and field. You know we're at the mercy of the elements. So uh, all in all, a pretty good experience. Uh, still got some growing to do, uh, but we're on the right track. We talked about some of your your men's athletes the last few weeks, but a couple of your females really stood up uh, big time this weekend in the pole vault. Uh, Carolina Carmichael, Sabrina Holtwuther, they were neck and neck on that pole vault. Uh, Sabrina edged out Carolina. They both hit the same height, which were school records as far as height, but then you go back and it's on uh, how many attempts did it, did, did it take you to get it, and Sabrina, I believe, took one less attempt to get that, uh, that record. Yeah, Sabrina cleared the 415 bar on her first attempt, which is uh, how the meet was decided. Uh, but beyond that, the fact that both of those athletes are jumping that high a bar at this stage in the season is incredible. Uh, Carolina and Sabrina, and not to, you know, we can't forget about Clara who mm -hmm. didn't get to jump this week, but you know, that group of, of girls is doing a great job. Um, they're, they're awesome, awesome kids. Um, fun to coach, fun to be around. Uh, they work hard and you know, when it's time to get after it, they know how to get after it. And uh, this weekend was kind of, uh, you know, it, it got them catapulted into the top of the conference and, and one of the best jumps in the region. So. It assures them a place to jump in the postseason. It puts mm -hmm. them in a great position going into the conference championship. And, uh, you know, it couldn't happen to a better group of kids. Well, you, you mentioned right there the NCAA. They're, they're pretty solid right now. They're not just pretty solid. They're very solid for that NCAA East right now. Yeah, they're, uh, they're definitely going to be able to compete there as long as, you know, we don't get hit with any injuries or unforeseen events. But they're safely into the regional championship. Um, so it gives us a chance to take a deep breath kind of collect our, ourselves a little bit and prepare for the championship, uh, it gets that burden of jumping really high off our back so that we can focus on winning mm -hmm. the championship, and that's what championships are all about. And again, uh, for Sabrina, also picked up an individual honor this week at the Field Athlete of the Week, so that's nice. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's really, it's a great thing for the program. It's a great thing for Sabrina. Uh, unfortunately, Carolina jumped the exact same right. bar and doesn't get the same honor, but... Uh, I think they're mature enough to be able to handle the situation <laughs> and uh, a little extra motivation in that group's not going to hurt. Well, your competition within the team is a good thing. Absolutely. Coach, let's talk about Arkansas State going to go through this weekend in Jonesboro. Uh, how's that? Is that going to be a team scored event? It will not be a uh, team scored meet. This is uh, what we consider to be our final tune-up. Okay. Um, we, we fly out for Tampa next Thursday for the, the conference championship. So we're utilizing this event to, turn, uh, you know, to to clean up the edges and uh, make sure our guys are sharp, uh, make sure the women's team is ready to rock and roll, um, clean up some things technically, uh, make sure we're motivated and focused and get out of there with some great performances and, and springboard us into the championship next week. How much do you gear up for an event like this since you kind of mentioned it's a tune-up getting ready for the championships? Uh, how much do you really just go all out? I mean, there's got to be, a, I guess, a balance. She's talking about cleaning things up, tuning up, but how much do you, do you blow it out maybe at Jonesboro? Well, you know, track and field is such a unique sport. Um, you know, with the field event kids, it's, it's about being faster and more explosive and technically proficient. We won't run our distance group. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing some of the distance kids will do is drop down a race or two and do some speed work. So uh, it's a glorified practice session for some of them. Uh, our longer kids like Dan and uh, Alicia, you know, the, the five 10K group, they're going to stay home. They're preparing for next week by not competing We're this week. Recovering, yeah. Right. Uh, on the track, you know, we're, we're looking to solidify some times. We're looking to try to get into better heats at the conference level. 
uh, polish off the hurdles a little bit. You know, every event's got a little bit different, uh, unique organism in and of itself that we have to, uh, you know, adapt to. And, and that's where we're at right now. Um, physically, we're, we're not going to get better physically at this point. You know, right. the work is done. Now it's a matter of making sure the mind is sharp, making sure we're focused and motivated, um, stay healthy, do the little things, uh, be mindful of the nutrition, be mindful of our sleep and our rest patterns, you know, which is difficult with finals coming mm -hmm. up, you know, so it's a very, very stressful time of the year and then you put a inaugural conference championship in the middle of it and, you know, it's a stressful time for the kids. So we need this meet to make sure that they are confident. You know, they go out, they perform, they do what they know they can do and then they can they can relax a little bit going into this championship, and that's what we're trying to do. And as a tune-up, it allows you to be in somewhat of a competitive environment too, because you don't want to take too much time off there. Exactly. You know, we, we need to be sharp. Uh, you know, competitive exposure, I talk about that all the time. Competitive composure, we talk about that a lot. You know, these kids, they have to compete to stay sharp, but we have to rest them enough so that they can be sharp. Right. So, you know, there's a fine line between what we're trying to do and uh, – I feel really good about this team. I feel like we're, uh, you know, a very responsible, mature group of, of young men and women. I feel like when the time comes in Tampa, we're going to be ready to go. Um, so we're going to utilize this weekend as just a stepping stone to give them that little extra confidence that they might need in whatever event they're doing uh, to propel them for next weekend. Coach, sounds good. We always appreciate it. My pleasure. That is Kevin Robinson. I'm Jeff Brightwell. This is the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.